What is up? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are looking at the fifth anniversary GSSR coming up this summer uh, to North America. Um, the reason this is interesting to me is because it is in five uh, categories. It's done by year. Let's so take a quick glance across these. Um, very wide variety across those years. Some of them have a lot of servants, some of them not so many. Um, some of them have some game-changing servants, some of them maybe not. Um, for comparison's sake, this is the GSSR that will come after. So this will be the New Year's GSSR. Um, 2023 for us says 2021 right here. Um, as you can see, a lot more categories, a lot fewer servants uh, on those categories across the board. And then in about a year and two months, uh, you'll see the sixth anniversary GSSR once again uh, a lot more categories, a lot fewer servants per category uh, across most of these, right? So uh, some of them only having four, for instance. Um, that being said, the final one that we have available to us is the New Year's one that just happened uh, four months ago now, uh, almost five months ago now. Wow, time's flying. Uh, the 2022 NAGS or the New Year GSSR. Um, that was, it looked like a mess. It looked really complicated and convoluted. Uh, and then when you got into it, it was really, really nice because as you can see, most of these have four, five, six, seven uh, different servants in them. Uh, none of them have four actually, but like five, six, seven, eight um, different servants in them. Really easy to make your choice. Uh, really easy to kind of see like, well, this is one that I like. This is someone that I don't like. This is a unit that I've always wanted, um, etc. right? Um, that's not the case with this GSSR. In my opinion, this is the last bad GSSR that we have from a uh, selection standpoint, simply because there's only five categories. Only five categories and, and a large swath of servants across them. So we are going to rack and stack these. We're gonna rank these on a tier list here. Um, 2015, 2016, uh, 2016, 2017, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20. Um, duplicate images are right here as well, uh, just in case there's some deliberation, maybe some like middle middle ground we want to create a, a separate category for. Uh, speaking of those categories, we have the best one. All right, we're going to do that. We're going to make one the best. We're going to make one the worst. And then we'll put um, these right here in the middle. Uh, let me make this one blue for the sake of ease, right? So um, the second best, the third, we're going to rank them. We're going to rank them. Um, so let's get into it. We are going to start first by looking all of them. We'll go through each of them, talk about who's in what, and then we'll start to rank them. Uh, and obviously not everybody's going to disagree or not everybody's going to disagree. Not everybody's going to agree, um, with a lot of these. That's totally fine. It's the nature of tier lists. Uh, I look forward to reading the comments underneath this video about where you agree, where you disagree. Um, one of my favorite things about the FCO community, uh, both on Twitch and YouTube, uh, is that a lot of people have, um, they've got their, their flag planted pretty firmly, I would say, in servants that they really enjoy and some that they don't like. Uh, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. So feel free to disagree or agree in the comments below. Uh, and as always leave that like, and subscribe much appreciated, much appreciated. Uh, so first we have the 2015, 2016 um this is this is a whole thing right here <laughs> uh we're looking at some honestly top tier units even to this day jalter is here uh you do have kentoki zerker kentoki is one of the best raid servants to this day on the jp server especially with the buster meta um skahawk uh king gilgamesh um, shiki one of my personal favorites and then okita as well not to mention uh nero bride right Across the board here, you'll see some fantastic Buster units. Uh, that stands out to me in particular. Um, oh yeah, baby! <laughs> Darth Tex just resubscribed for Tex. nine months. Hey, hey, oh shark. Love how much you spend Daddy the Bezos love around the community. <laughs> Have some of Daddy Bezos' money on me. Thank you so Sharky much. Heart. <laughs> thanks, Darth Tex, for the nine months, man. Uh, thank you for the prime, Darth Tex. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
um but yeah so as you see here like there's a lot of top tier buster mps uh obviously that's not like the only thing going on here shooting's gotten some great buffs um gilgamesh still needs one okita's amazing uh got some great buffs as well um so another thing that you'll see here is the presence of the four stars this is a unique take on the tier list uh for gssr in my opinion simply because we are going to heavily factor in the four stars the four stars for me personally are basically going to make or break these gssrs because of the fact that there are so many ssrs per category it does honestly in my opinion help to take into account what some of these four and three stars are that you could walk away with so uh as we look across the board here once again we'll give a we'll give a quick overview of each one but this has what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen different servants um on the five star side uh 28 29 30 31 32 <laughs> uh 32 four stars uh to take into account and then looks like 34 of the three stars for a lot of players this is just gonna look like a typical rolling session depending on how much they roll uh with a lot of these showing up some of them obviously not so much but for a lot of these uh, you would expect to see them in just about any rolling session anyway so um this won't be like much surprise like oh my god i got a uriel no way <laughs> um that being said though that's the first category and then it starts to trim down considerably as you can imagine um we still do have it looks like 14 to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 on this and then down to 16 srs and two three stars um on the srs you do have some very uh limited units um some highly sought after units um uh, among them uh summer mordred is going to be high up on my uh priority list for years to come most likely um not to mention you have summer martha uh often a fan favorite um lobo is often again a favorite and then passion lip who doesn't come around super often but will have a banner coming up soon in na right around the time of the gssr so uh, it's starting to trim down starting to trim down then we get into 17 18 um <laughs> well, actually wait a minute there's <laughs> there's not 14 servants here because one as you can see is missing because uh i'm so petty that i have kiara blocked anyway um 17 18 has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 11 servants in the ssr category for 17 18 uh and then when you look at how many four stars again it's getting to be a much more digestible number compared to the first year looks like we have 17 just about um and then three three stars right there now we're getting into the more recent years the last couple of years here uh 18 19 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right there 10 ssrs 12 srs three three stars um that's pretty that's that's now we're getting more reasonable obviously and then last but not least we do have the most recent one which will have a uh, voyager on it by the way uh, so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten right there not to mention uh looks like seven i think uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four stars. Only one three star. The last three star we've gotten in FGO, which is honestly pretty sad. Pretty sad when you think about it. Uh, but the last three star that we have gotten in Fate Grand Order is Mandricardo. Uh, and since the JP server is two years ahead of us, you know um, that that's kind of a feels bad man moment. But that's the uh, the entirety of all of them. Now we uh, now we got to go through these, right? So the way that this is going to factor out, in my opinion, um, well, not in my not in my opinion, I should say, the way that this is going to play out, uh, obviously, is based on my opinion. Chat will provide their input as they are often uh, inclined to do, which I love that. Um, and we're gonna kind of like deliberate, hey, like which is gonna be a good value here, which is good bang for your buck. 
which is a impactful four star which which of these four stars doesn't really matter um etc etc uh one thing that stands out to me and probably stands out to you as well is that first year is so packed there's so much here so much here um it has the second most or most ssrs depending on how you have things blocked on the on the wiki <laughs> um it has a lot it has a lot of ssrs uh it has a lot of srs um and uh not very many three stars uh on the next year after that but a lot on this one but it, again you know so um when it comes to how much the four stars would affect the ranking of this for me personally not a lot because so many of these have been so available for so long now uh across multiple banners you've probably gotten spooked by for instance a nito chris a helena uh, it seems like every other banner I get a Liz or an Emia. Um, and so, you know, totally fine. Totally fine. They're great servants. Um, but by this point, if you've been playing for a little bit of time, you probably have a decent number of these. And even if you're newer, um, more likely than not, you uh, you have what, three or four of these, depending on how much you roll, right? So um, that's not to say that none of them are impactful. Someone in chat just mentioned Medea Lily. Um, a very impactful, often underrated servant. Uh, I did mention Nito Chris, uh, extremely impactful. If you've got an MP2 Nito Chris, your life is a lot easier um, due to the fact that you can uh, fully charge your battery, have a little bit left over as well. Helena is huge because she has a 50% self battery in the future. Um, her buff gives her an extra 30% uh, on top of the party wide 20% on this second skill. It used to be uh, the chance to increase MP gain, or sorry, MP damage for five or 50% for one turn, and then the five stars right there. Um, and now it is a 20 to 30% battery on a six turn cooldown as well. Uh, so again, 50% right there, 30% self battery. That's pretty big. It's pretty big. Um, not to mention some of my personal favorites: uh, Saber Alter, Lancer Alter, uh, Kiritsugu Emiya right here. One of the best Final Ascension arts in the game. Um, Zerkerlot, Premier Farmer, etc., etc. So, uh, it's not to say that the SRs are bad. They're really good, in fact. Um, if I have to look across the board at the four stars on this, there's maybe like two that if I'm a if I'm an average FGO player, like I, I'm not really super thrilled to see. Obviously, one is going to be Steno. Um, she does have her uses. She is valuable in a lot of different ways. Um, but she is held back by the non-damaging NP, in my opinion. Um, just in comparison to other characters. She's not bad. She's not bad. Uh, the meme is largely dying down with Steno. But that being said, um, Beowulf is probably up there as well. Uh, Anne and Mary are not going to stack up as well compared to some other options um, in the game. Uh, other than that, though, some really solid servants, some really good ones, some of which get great buffs going forward, some of which benefit from an arts or a buster meta going forward as well. So with that being said, it's a very deep pool. That's perhaps the most uh, detrimental aspect of the first year is that there is so many options on this from the four star and five star perspective um, that it's almost impossible to aim for someone, to hope for someone. Um, if you talk about a percentage-based probability, like, it's a hard truth, but you literally have, like, a 7%, I think it is. Um, if we were to count these again, I think we said, uh, 14, so let's just see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so 14. Um, a 14 different servant pool. You're looking at a 7%, yeah, that's, that was right. 7% chance uh, to get one of these SSRs. 7%. Like, that's... You're paying money. Like, this is this costs premium um, St. Quartz, so, like, the paid St. Quartz only. Uh, for me, personally, that matters, right? So, that's the first year. Looking at the second year, uh, it does have 15. Again, you're not going to see Kiara on here due to a personal vendetta. Gameplay-wise, Kiara is very good. Uh, but I just, I don't want to look at it. <laughs> Other than that though, like, again, you do have a lot of, uh, five stars, but a lot fewer four stars. 
a lot fewer four stars um now these four stars do include like caster marie and summer kiyohime who are not among the stronger four stars in the game let's say but you also have uh some like i said earlier more popular ones that people often like summer martha um Penthesilea is up there for a lot of people uh summer morgid passion lip um lobo is very high up there for me personally right so uh a lot of a uh, lot of hit or miss on the four stars for the second year when we look at the five stars musashi is massively impactful this guy right here is one buff away from basically being like breaking the game um like incredibly incredibly close it already has great buster crits um but he's he's still probably one buff away uh is it sad you rolled hard for sherlock but barely use him no it's not it's not sad sherlock's very situational golden fire he's very situational he was my first gs or yeah first gssr on one of my accounts and you know he has his uses but he's not going to be an everyday use um across the board on this we know now that samama lancer is about to become like busted broken cool in uh, about two years probably less than that uh, on na um moriarty is already really good ishtar of course is great and then you have merlin uh first asan melts hijikata is really good again i mentioned the gameplay of kiara very very top tier one of the best units in the game gameplay wise um so from an ssr perspective this is extremely strong extremely strong um sr not so much uh, at least compared to this first one um if we're looking at a direct comparison ssr wise um this mysterious hero one x is just not gonna she's not gonna really like change uh the course of a, a an account for you in my opinion um mhx is cool she she the reason she has a lot of buffs is because she needed a lot of buffs let's say that um she has a ton of buffs which means you can get some saint courts out of her due to interludes and rank ups but like there's a reason for that her kit's just not very good uh not to mention the fact that um Gilgamesh again he he desperately needs a buff um still cool in his own regard uh, especially from a lore perspective but if you do know his lore you know why he needs a buff like he's he shouldn't be uh outperformed by so many other servants um Shiki is a personal favorite so is Okita but they're also very powerful servants Okita has a fantastic buff coming up to NA Shiki already got her buff um she, she hits really hard on her NP uh, she's kind of awkward as an arts AoE um but you know not everybody can loop. It is what it is. Uh, and then we have like a Zerker Raikou. Again, situationally fun, cool, hits hard, uh, but not necessarily going to like change the trajectory of an account. Um, Nero Bride is good, useful. Um, her utility does unfortunately diminish a little bit over time. Um, the great thing though is she does have a damaging NP uh so she's not going to not going to lose too much of her luster no matter what has jay shen been around lately uh jay shen and i talk in dms probably like every three days guy budesu um he works a ton but uh yeah he's 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 like around ish but yeah we talk every week uh jay shen and i um and then obviously you have like dante's who if you just recently fought zeus what's up akito desu if you just recently fought Zeus, um, you know that Dante's goes to town on that. Uh, we use Dante's on my quick account against uh, Zeus. A lot of fun. Hits hard, obviously. Um, and then Shiramakusa's gotten some good buffs, so he's pretty good to go now. His buff strip on his AoE uh, MP is really good. Uh, not to mention Jalter, highest attack in the game. So, uh, on a direct comparison perspective, it would be really difficult to like just like one for one compare these. There are a couple of servants that put the second year up over the first year, in my opinion, just right off the bat. Um, among those, Merlin obviously is up there. Uh, but again, from a gameplay perspective, Kiara is like probably one of, if not the best extra class servants in the game. Uh, again, I don't like her. I don't want to look at her. I don't want to hear her. I don't want to see her. But gameplay wise, really good. Really, really good. Um, and that only increases as the arts meta comes soon to NA. So, um, not to mention, Melt gets absurdly strong later on. If you know anything about her buff, you know why I'm so excited. I'll probably be NP5ing her soon this summer. 
Um, she increases her crit damage for three turns when she does a normal attack. For three turns, if she does a normal attack, she's increasing her crit damage by 15%. That's insane. It's so fun. Uh, not to mention the already uh, obtained buff on the third skill and the great NP as well that removes buffs after damage. So crits after her NP hit so hard, right? Uh, that being said, um, I would put second year just a little bit over first year, just a little bit um, as far as like SSR um, rankings would go, right? But neither one's really bad. Um, but they could end up being the worst they, because there's only five, you know, it's, it's the nature of the beast. Going into the third year here, uh, it's extremely hit or miss in my opinion. Um, you do have, um, you know, Reshka goes a fan favorite. You do have Scotty who still to this day on the JP server, uh, isn't a, um, meta support servant. Hopefully gets another buff soon, but I don't know if that'll happen. Um, then you've got like some shades of gray in between. Summer Nero is really strong, really great. She's situational though. She is situational. Um, and then Maid Alter again, situational and, uh, Abigail as well. Iskandar is extremely strong on the, on the JP server, but then you get to, uh, Sigurd who just recently got kind of a disappointing buff in my opinion. Hokusai who's not the hardest hitter at NP1 no matter what. Same with Okita Alter. Again, just not a hard hitter at NP1. Um, and Semiramis suffers from the same. Semiramis isn't even the best AoE assassin in the game. Uh, if you have her at NP1, that's going to be gray because you probably have her at NP5. And if you don't, she will be coming back on a rerun. So uh, for me personally, this is a very inconsistent and largely weak outside of a few uh, exceptions. Um, SSR group right here. Again, Ereshkigal is extremely strong or extremely good uh, on the JP server right now. She's got great utility already on the NA server, but the damage finally catches up on her NP later on due to the Earth attribute buff that she gets on her NP. Scotty, as always, is Scotty. But for a lot of players, if they get a Holmes, someone in chat mentioned this earlier, um, they may not get the most bang for their buck that they would have gotten had they gotten a couple other of these servants um, so that to me is is largely a detriment however then we look at the four stars and looking at the four stars one of these faces should stand out immediately that is fujino fujino for a long time was one of the rarest servants in the game she recently got a well not recently anymore actually gosh was this eight months ago um last summer she came back on a banner for the uh, Summer 5 rerun. Obviously, Summer 5 initial run is coming to NA very soon. Um, so in about a year and three months, uh, you will have a chance to roll for uh, Fujino, right? Um, which is cool for me personally. I didn't get her uh, the first time she came around, so it'll be nice to have a chance to um, add a four star to my collection who hopefully will be not painful to get, right? Um, outside of that, um, you do have like a, a few cool servants, I would say, uh, other than Fujino. Um, Assassin Nidocris, again, kind of cool, not bad. Um, Lancer Raiko is like a secretly really strong uh, Buster support servant. Um, on her second skill, she can increase an ally's Buster performance for three turns, 40%, and remove their debuffs, by the way. Um, and then party attack up and party star generation up. Uh, three turns. The first skill is selfish, star absorption and crit damage, but um, it just means she's going to allow her teammates um, to create a bunch of stars and then she'll hit harder with them in an ideal setup. If not, she can enable others to uh, hit harder as well. She ignores buffs or ignores defensive buffs and then gains a bunch of critical stars. So a nice kit. It's pretty complete. Um, top to bottom, pretty middling star absorption for a Lancer. That's fine. Um, so she's she's pretty strong. You have Cersei, who's got a great battery. Uh, Cersei's gonna have a ton of utility and Shishu Fest um, coming to NA very soon this September. If you have a Cersei, you are going to have an easier time on one of the better nodes in the Shishu Fest. Um, there's just no two ways about it. It's a really restrictive node, the one that I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, then you know. I'm not, if not, that's okay. We also have Chiron, who year after year continues to be one of the most solid four stars in the game, um, to the surprise of probably none. His double arts, double quick deck really uh, helps him do what he wants to do best, which is support the party um, via his skills and his presence alone, right? So um, party crit damage up three turns, 50%, not bad. Star bomb, 
15. That's not bad either. Um, party wide, or sorry, no, one ally. Um, three turn buff of 30% on each card color. That's really good. That's really, really good. Uh, and then on the first skill, it's a pretty standard uh, mind's eye, true. But then you have on his NP over here, which we'll look at the updated version. The Earth Attribute, we mentioned that with uh, Ereshkigal. He removes an enemy's defensive buffs first and then damages them. The damage is fine before, like right now on NA, it's fine. Like it's okay. It's probably not gonna kill unless you have class advantage and some buffs on him. But then you get to his A plus rank. Uh, if you have Earth Attribute, they're gonna die. They're gonna die. Um, it's funny to me on some of these uh, these buff scalings. So like MP2 was 1200% before. You get that at MP1 now. So if you had him at MP2, you're looking at some very healthy numbers. 1800% at MP5. Um, my Chiron is close to that. Uh, not on purpose. He's just, just kind of shown up over time. Uh, but very, very strong unit, very, very strong unit, uh, who removes defensive buffs and does a ton of damage to Earth Attribute enemies. If you're wondering about Earth Attribute enemies, I'm just gonna scroll. I'm just gonna scroll. I'm gonna let them load because there's so many of them. But when we talk about Earth Attribute enemies, it's a lot, that's a lot of enemies. Uh, so you're going to be very happy with Chiron if you do get him on that GSSR, uh, or if you already have him, right? So that factors in. Factors in. And yeah, he does have rough run, uh, Max, you're, you're right there. Um, but this is not, like, this is not one that's just going to, like, blow the player base away and be like, oh my god, this is definitely the best one, right? Like, so far, that's, that's how it kind of looks. Then we move on to this one. 2018, 2019. Again, you can add two years, uh, for NA on these. Um, King Protea, Summer BB, Demon King Nobunaga, who is not the same servant uh, on initial release as Demon King Nobunaga is now on the GP server. They are vastly different servants, in fact. Chinsu Wong, Arjuna Alter, Kama, uh, Murasaki, Rainus. Again, not the same servant they were on release uh, after two buffs. Rainus is ridiculously good. Uh, Jarcher, Benny Enma. Uh, on the SRs, you do have, again, some fun units that you may not have a chance to get all the time. MH double X uh, for a lot of people is their best anti berserker unit. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and then you also have like a Saber Mave. Uh, if you like Mave, you probably like Saber Mave, right? Uh, Ashra Talmud is one of the more fun, harder hitting four stars in the game. Uh, but you also have Miyu, who again was one of their rarest servants in the game for a long time. Recently got another banner on JP, but Miu, in my opinion, is great at several MP levels. I'm not talking just like MP2. If you have an MP5 Miu, like you're, I would say you should not be upset that you've gotten so many of them. I would say you should not be upset that you've gotten so many of them. Uh, she's really good now on JP. Um, her MP before this 3000 demerit was awful, um, but now it's gone. She has this fantastic NP, um, charges parties NP gauge 10% every turn, three turns. Parties attack up every turn, three turns. Parties HP up every turn, three turns. Um, really good stuff. Um, crit stars every turn, three turns. Um, and her kit, although the first skill, should, in my opinion, should be buffed to be like some, uh, some party utility as well. When we look at the second skill and third skill, um, they have a ton of value over time. Uh, and a longer fight is where she's going to excel. So uh, a targetable battery of 30%, buff success rate, right? Um, on the second skill, it keeps her around longer. This is a very impactful skill. I have had a lot of fights where this mattered and it ended up turning the tide uh, in my favor. Um, and this, again, it's own critical attack, or own crit damage, uh, own arts performance. I'm not really a fan of that, but it does kind of help her get her MP going uh, a little bit better since her arts card is two hits. Um, that being said, she's a very good servant now in JP. So if you were to look at these banners and say, uh, well, maybe I'm not sold on the five stars. Let me look at the four stars. This would be a strong candidate to, uh, to be influenced by. Uh, and last but not least, we have the final year here, 2019-2020. That'll be uh, 2021-2022 on NA. Um, Yang, 
Voyager, Space Ishtar, uh, Bunny Toria, Summer Musashi, Da Vinci, um, Romulus Quirinus, and then Super Orion, Sei Shonagon, Saber Astolfo. Uh, I am, um, I'm obviously biased in, in favor of Saber Astolfo. You guys know I MP5 Saber Astolfo. Um, you guys have seen me do some fun things with Saber Astolfo on stream, uh, damage wise, capability wise, utility wise. Um, I'm gonna try not to let that influence this. <laughs> that being said, this is a solid one across the board. It's a solid one across the board. Uh, right, Nick Advent, huge crit damage. <laughs> um, <laughs> that being said, um, this is a really good one regardless. Summer Melt, again, uh, this is another servant that regardless of the NP level that you have, you don't have too many. You don't have too many. Uh, no matter how many you have, um, simply because, uh, one, the arts meta is coming, but two, she's just so good. She's so good. Um, then on the other side of the scale, like, as much as I like Calamity Jane, as much as I like Archer Oskabahime, um, and even Jet Kita, they just are not quite on that level. They're not quite on that level. Um, and Kijio Koyo, again, I like Kijio Koyo a lot, coming out very soon on the Requiem event. Um, but from like a, a gameplay value perspective, Kijio is not going to be there for most people. Single target, 600 to 1,000 standard buster scaling uh, attack up first. But then on the skill set here, um, you have basically a, a, an amalgamation of morph, but it's a defense up three turns, star absorption, which is very healthy. It's really good. Um, own quick up, own buster up, and then overcharges one ally's NP by one stage uh, one time, three turns. On the third skill, party HP recovery, the latest debuff removal, and then instant kill immunity for three turns. It's okay. Um, it's okay. It's all right. It's a weird kit, but it's okay. It kind of fits her, like, um, persona, I would say, which is, uh, I'm not going to spoil the event because we're not there yet, but she is, um, a shrine maiden of sorts. <laughs> Uh, that being said, um, very situational. I like her a lot, but I'm not going to sit here and say that she's like some meta thing. Uh, yeah, you want her for the dinosaur. You want her for the, for the dinosaur. Um, but like I said, really wildly inconsistent, uh, wide ranging value on the four stars. Um, you could go so far as to say that like Melt is the only like top tier four star out of all of these. Uh, you would not hear a lot of pushback from me personally, is what it is. Um, another thing, if you don't have an MP5 Mandricardo, this is going to be a really appealing banner to go for for you, because you're going to get a lot of Mandricardos, most likely. You could get a lot of Mandricardos, I should say, uh, on that roll. Um, looking at the SSRs, you have some, like, absolute, just, like, timeless juggernauts. Super Orion... Um, who's going to shine really, really well in uh, LB 5.5, by the way. Space Ishtar, Summer Musashi, Da Vinci Rider. Um, those still to this day uh, on the JP server uh, are top tier servants. They absolutely do their job well. Um, no slouches uh, after that tier would be Yang, um, would be Romulus, uh, would be Saber Stalfo as well. And then when you look at the others, like Bunny Toria is not bad. She's situational. She's not bad. She needs to be taken care of. She's basically like a ruler Okita alter as far as like damage output goes. So you're going to want multiple or a lot of buffs. Um, and then Voyager's coming soon. And Say Shonagon just came out recently. Both of them are quick AoE. Uh, you're going to get different utility out of both of them. Say has her uses. Say is um, is situationally very good. She's fun. That's probably the reason you rolled for her if you did roll for her. Um, but with Voyager, uh, it's just a very unique skill set, right? So 30 to 50% battery, six turn cooldown, not bad at all. Three turn debuff immunity and 10 crit stars. We like that a lot, right? Um, swing by A, which is a unique take on the Mind's Eye uh, evade skill. It's a one turn evade, but it also has Quick performance up three turns, which is 20%. And then you choose one enemy, whoever's targeted, obviously, for quick resist down three turns. The reason that matters is this is additive. So it's essentially a 40% quick buff from Voyager against that uh, enemy, right? That's big. That's really big. So you have a 50% battery, a 40% quick buff, depending on the enemy. Uh, and on the third skill, 
Um, one ally's critical star absorption, 600%, but honestly, that's enough. His star absorption is really, really good at 153. For reference, um, 200, 209 is, is going to be like top tier, absolute highest in the game type. Um, so definitely about 75% there. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, the crit damage up is 20-30%. That's okay. Um, and then the critical attack chance resistance for three turns is a bunch of word vomit that I hate. Uh, I just... Whatever. It's whatever. Uh, but the absorption is nice and the crit damage is better than nothing. Voyager with Scotty, though, is, is a different story. Uh, those quick crits will hit very hard. Uh, passives, because it's an extra class, are probably pretty good. In this case, they are. Uh, buff removal resist is built in at 10%. That's nice. Um, two crit stars every turn. Uh, debuff resist 6% and then the crit damage and arts performance up crit damage up being 8% again is going to stack with this right here Going into the NP. I think this will probably get a buff in the near future uh, I could be wrong, but I think that it will probably on a requiem rerun if that ever happens um, So AOE uh, NP damage up first obviously that's going to get into multiplicative territory sky attribute That's very nice charges the party's NP gauge by 20% and then charges living human allies by 10% as well. Of note, among those living human allies, um, let's see here, where is Miyu? Miyu Edelfelt right there. Uh, so there is a comp where Miyu Edelfelt, I think it's two Miyus and one Voyager. Uh, using that comp, you can NP infinitely. I wish I was exaggerating. Uh, because of the different party charges that they all give to each other, once you get their NPs going, you're literally NPing with Voyager every turn. Every turn. Uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. So they all kind of like charge each other, and there's a lot of synergy. It's nice. It's cool. It's fun. Um, it's not like the strongest output wise, but like, w why not do it? It's fun, right? Um, but they're not on the same banner for the GSSR, so it is whatever, you know? That being said, um, you do have access to some strong damage within a uh, specific lane, which is the sky attribute. Um, there is NP damage up. There is uh, a great battery along with quick up. If you can give Voyager attack up or defense down on the enemy, um, if you can do that, then honestly, you've got a pretty decent output servant. Uh, Definitely at higher NP levels, NP probably two or three plus, um, depending on the scaling. Let's see, uh, probably three plus, NP three plus, um, for like really consistent output. Uh, but it's Voyager, it's fun. Like you'll probably learn to love this servant, especially when you learn Voyager's story um, and interact with Voyager in the Requiem event. Um, we recently posted the Fate Requiem literature in our Discord, uh, so feel free to hop in there if you want to read Fate Requiem before Fate Requiem event comes out. It's volume one that's in our server. Um, someone asked in chat, can he loop? Uh, the answer is LOL. <laughs> the answer is LOL. Um, technically speaking, Voyager can loop. Um, I'm not gonna say it's uh, it's like the, the nicest thing, but that's because of the class. It's, we're not looking at an Edmund Dantes here, uh, where like being class neutral in most fights is gonna be okay because of like an offsetting NP gain skill. Um, you, when you, yeah, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna need a lot of help. You're gonna need a lot of help. Um, and again, like the damage is probably not gonna carry you through. But that's okay. That's okay. So Voyager will factor in for a lot of people. Uh, on their GSSR here, right? So now we've gone through all of these. Where do we put these? Like how do we how do we begin to rank these? Um, I think it would be prudent to start with either what we see is the very top or the very bottom. Let's be let's be pragmatic about this, right? Um, realistically speaking, when it comes to like the worst of these banners. We have to take into account like some hard truths. One, who are you gonna most likely already have a bunch of? Two, who do you have the least chance of getting? For me personally, this first one right here, um, I just, you have a 7% chance, a 7% chance 
uh, of getting the SSR that you want out of these. You have the same chance of getting uh, a Jalter if you want a Jalter, uh, an Okita if you want an Okita, um, you know, Shiki, whoever else, as you do a MHX. Is MHX inherently bad? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> the saber face enemy thing is like, it's okay. The damage, there's no like additional, <laughs> I'm sorry. There's no like additional, um, you know, buffs on this or whatever. Um, and then in the kit, like you have to do all of these upgrades. You have to, you have to. Uh, um, even after them, like enemy defense down 10 to 20%. Okay, cool. That's basically a three star still. Like you could see that on some three stars. There are some four stars that literally have that skill. Um, and then a delayed, a delayed stun to all enemies. What? I don't know, man. Uh, for, uh, whatever. Uh, and it's, a, it's the chance, by the way, it's a chance to grant, uh, the delayed, Oh, whatever um the second one it went from stars 4 to 14 because like that's cheeky i guess uh and then it was 10 to 20 which is better five turn cooldown uh invincible honestly this should be a four turn cooldown she's not that good she's not that good of a servant make this a four turn cooldown she's, let's let's call a spade a spade she's not that good uh, and then on the third skill, this used to be um, star generation rate against saber enemies, which like I, I mean Who thought that was a good idea? Uh, and then own damage against saber enemies for three turns as you can probably tell due to mathematics um, Having this buff does not out damage using an archer so, so even during those three turns, uh, like you still wouldn't be bringing her to go against like any old saber because that's how math works. Um, then it became attack up, but again, it's only 10 to 20%. So like the buffs that they did give, uh, in some cases were just like, this is pretty middling 10 to 20%. This again is pretty middling. Are they additive? Yeah. And you're looking like... 40% at their both level 10. Cool. All right. Um, now, if you're going against a saber-faced saber enemy, <laughs> if you're going against a saber-faced saber enemy, uh, then it's it's a little bit different. It's, it's like a usable niche. Um, but a saber-faced saber enemy. Let's, let's, let's go through and count all these. Uh, Artoria. Uh, Alter. So, Artoria and Salter. Um, <laughs> Lily Artoria. Uh, <laughs> Okita. Uh, <laughs> Saber Okitan. Nero. Uh, Mordred. Lakshmi Bai. So eight total potential enemies in the entire game. I don't know about you guys. I don't recall, and I have a JP account that's all caught up on story. I do not recall the last time I fought Lakshmi by Nero Okita. Uh, I, I just, maybe it's me. Um, Four star... Uh, Arthur Lily, I don't remember the last time I fought this servant. When's the last time I fought this servant? I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, so yeah, like, it's, she's just not good. She's not. And I like her. I do. She's, she's fun. She's got a cool costume. Like, you know, but she's just not good. Um, so when we look at this kind of a GSSR, like, you're paying money. You're paying money. Um, and you have a 7% chance to get among all of these a wide swath of different servants. Some some of these hold up very well over time. 
Um, a C minus skill set's being very generous, in my opinion, Koji Kakame. Bad Bunny, thanks for the follow. Thanks for being here. Um, so if you're looking at like, hey, I'm going to pay at least $15, uh, potentially, uh, to have a 7% chance, what are we talking about on return on investment here as far as like what you could potentially get? Again, Shiki is great. I love Shiki. She doesn't have a battery. Um, she doesn't loop as an arts AOE. Um, Gilgamesh has not aged well. He just hasn't. I'm sorry. We talked about it in the past. Brin is great, but Brin next to Skahawk, when uh, Summer Tomamo exists further down below, like that's that's a really tough sell. It's a really tough sell because you have a chance at either one of these two uh, when you have a much smaller pool that has, uh, or not m not much smaller, but a different pool, a better pool uh, for that. Uh, $12 for 7% seems good to you. Oof. Oof. Um, and like, I like Raikou, but when we talk about Raikou, we're not talking about somebody who's a very accessible buster AOE. Like, show me where on here am I not only going to be able to charge my battery quickly, um, but I'm going to have like long-term sustainable uh, defensive help. You know what I mean? Do I have an evade for one turn? Yeah, but it's tied to her buster up. So if I'm trying to get her NP going and I need to use the buster up on the NP in conjunction with her third skill, right? Uh, I have to wait for the evade. I have to wait for the evade. Or vice versa. If I need to survive long enough to get my NP, uh, again, assuming you don't have like scopes and, and, and waivers and shit like that, um, I have to use my evade and then I don't get to use my buster up potentially on the NP or I'm waiting uh, five more turns for it to come back. So, um, you know, the demonic and earth or sky, there are servants or not servants. There are enemies where you'll, you'll do like massive damage against them. There's one challenge quest in particular that, uh, I think most of the enemies were demonic um, and Earth Servants. I, I want to say Uoku. I could be wrong on that. Um, that being said, like, she's just not very accessible. She's not very accessible. She has not aged well. She has not aged well. Critical Star Absorption is great at 6,000% when she's got true Buster Star Absorption at 9. Um, and the critical damage is 3 attacks only. So potentially 1 turn if you get an, uh, a chain right there, right? 60% is nice, but again... It's just kind of a haphazard kit. It's kind of a haphazard kit. And when you compare her to her contemporaries as a Buster AoE Berserker, it just isn't there. It's not there, right? Um, the damage is fun, but the critical attack chance, this, this being the buff they gave her on a strengthening quest is hilarious to me. It's absolutely hilarious to me. I don't understand what they thought they were going to do with this. I don't understand what they thought they were going to accomplish by making this the buff plus the damage. It's absurd. Um, so that being said, you need 29 bones to ascend her uh, to third, sorry, to fourth ascension, not 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 fourth, third ascension. Um, and then you need 44 just to get to skill level six. That's one skill. That's way too many bones. Uh, I, it's just not, it's not there, right? So again, Let's say you really like Okita. She does have a battery coming soon. Same with Skahawk, has a battery coming soon. Gil already has a battery. Um, let's say you really like Kentoki. Let's say you really need um, a raid boss killer. Zerker Kentoki definitely fits that bill. What's up, Dumplo? Um, definitely fits that bill, right? But for all of those, there are the MHX. There are the Raiko. Um, if you don't have Scotty, uh, I, I mean, you're looking at a Dante's that's going to be very, very situational for you. Extremely situational for you. Uh, so it's very, very, very hit or miss in my opinion. For me personally, after we look at all of these, I would go so far as to put year one, 2016, 20, sorry, yeah. Um, 2015, 2016, I would put it at the worst right now. I'm going to put it at the bottom right now. Uh, there's so many servants in it and the the difference in value fluctuates wildly not to mention the fact 
If I go on this, I'm going for a DPS. Let's make that very clear. If I go for this SSR ticket, this GSSR, I mean, uh, I'm not gonna like stumble into an OP support. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like accidentally get that. Um, Bride is great, but again, we talked about how like the value of her quote unquote support um, starts to diminish over time to the point where they gave her a damage buff in the future. I think it's Sky Enemies, by the way. Uh, is it on the third skill? So Sky Attribute. Increased damage against enemies with Sky Attribute for three turns, right? Which is cool. Cool. However, uh, the rest of her kit, like, it's it's nice, especially if you don't have your own Castoria, you can borrow a Castoria. Uh, and use her if you did get her and use this and do some other creative accounting when it comes to like battery uh, to make the looping happen, right? Like it's a thing, it's a thing. Um, but when we talk about paid courts, I wanna get a, a servant out of this. Um, it's, I don't know. To me personally, it's just not there. It's just not there. So off the bat, I'm gonna put the first year as the worst year. I'm gonna put the first year as the worst year. This is subject to change as we go, but uh, for now, it seems pretty clear that that's, um, that's, that's where it stands right now. That's where it stands right now. Uh, moving on from there, um, in stark contrast to that first year uh, are these other banners that have, again, just like a better, a more appealing, a, a more attractive, uh, a chance of getting uh, some of these servants, right? Um, so when we talk about some of these units, again, I don't have Kiara on here for reasons, but absolutely top tier gameplay perspective servant. Melt, top tier gameplay servant. Um, MHX Alter is like MHX except with class advantages. Uh, again, kind of a wonky kit that got a bunch of buffs on the second and third skill, not to mention the NP, right? Um, but at least like you have some class advantage going in. Uh, would year one be helpful for a brand new account by the anniversary? If it's a brand new account, um, no, <laughs> no, let it get. Um, and the reason for that is, is something we'll go into soon. Something we'll go into soon. Um, but <laughs> But yeah, we'll uh, we'll look at that. Uh, good question, good question. And again, we'll bring that back up soon. Um, but yeah, so with MHX Alter, like you do have the the gimmick, you do have the whole like saber class servant enemies. But at least there's already class advantage there. And then they added this buff of good alignment, fifty percent for one turn, which activates on the NP, so you don't have to worry about timing your skills, right? Uh, and then very good damage because it's a single target quick. Great, we love that. Um, crit damage up for one of these um, one time. Um, the stars, again, was really weird at 4 to 14. That got buffed 10 to 20. 20, 30% quick up. That's great. And then this third skill, which I really like personally. Um, reduces one ally's critical star absorption by 100% for one turn. Uh, and then party attack up uh, three turns. The reason I really like this skill is because it's completely useless. Uh, <laughs> it's not completely useless. I'm joking. 10 to 20% attack up is nice. But reducing star absorption by 100% for one of your allies, her star absorption is nine. Is nine. Let's let's assume you're running double Scotty. All right. Let's assume you're running double Scotty. Um, if if your star absorption of nine is stacking up against the star absorption of 49 around you, uh, spoiler alert: you're not going to take all the stars. You're not going to take all the stars. Uh, which is not necessarily needed because again, class advantage, but you know, it all paints a picture. So on this one right here, um, we had, where is he? We had shooting up here as like, um, a decent AOE, uh, assassin who, you know, no matter what is out damaged by gray right now at NP1. The same is true for Cleopatra. If you have gray, you don't necessarily, unless you like them, you don't need a shooting. You don't need a Cleopatra. Um, that's going to be true into this next year as well with Semiramis. Like, if you have Grey or you are going to get her on the rerun, which you probably will, you don't need them. You don't need to plan for them. Unless you like them. 
Um, that being said, across a, lo a lot of these other ones, Musashi, very good servant. Ishtar, very good servant. Squirtoria, to this day, very good servant. If you watched uh, Fino, Fino Tyson, if you watched his runs against Zeus, um, he used Squirtoria a lot, not only against Zeus, but against Dioscuri as well. Um, really fun servant. Has a lot of uh, a lot of hard hitting potential, especially as we get into Double Castoria. Um, and then we've already talked about how good Tom Lancer becomes in the future. Not to mention Jimmy is on his way to just like ridiculously cracked status, right? Um, first Hassan, like there's there's some like hallmark servants here. There's some absolutely hallmark servants here. Um, as far as like good ones go, again gameplay of Kiara Melt. Uh, first, Hassan, Merlin, Tama Lancer, Jimmy, Ishtar, uh, Squirtoria, Musashi. Not to mention Squirtoria has not had a banner in forever. I don't remember the last time Squirtoria had a solo rate up banner uh, on the JP server. Like, it's been a long time. Um, so you're looking at GSSR, 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 GSSR. Um, the 14 million downloads campaign. Holy crap. That is insane. The 14 million downloads campaign. Woo! That's the last time she had a banner. Isn't that crazy? Um, so one of the rarest in the game, and not to mention before that, GSSR, GSSR, GSSR. Like, you're looking way back. From when she actually had um, legitimate availability other than this downloads campaign right obviously she will come back at some point it's even more promising now that they just gave tom a lancer a buff it kind of seems to point to uh a continuation of the trend they've done where they kind of resurrect uh servants that have been out of the game for too long arjuna alter miyu uh fujino uh or craft essence and or craft essences that have been gone for too long um, hopefully that continues this summer. Hopefully Squirtoria comes back. Um, people can have a chance to get her. But for me personally, that factors in. This is a very rare servant that I would not have a chance to get otherwise outside of a GSSR. Uh, and as someone who has most servants in the game, like that speaks to me. However, it's an NP1. So it'd be for collection purposes most likely, right? Um... But when you look across the board here, it's a much stronger pull uh, from an SSR perspective than year one. Even Proto Arthur, even Ilya, um, even Castor Da Vinci, uh, we talked about MHX Alter, Hijikata, even all of them, uh, they may not be the top of their class in their class, but uh, they're going to carry their weight. They are indeed SSRs. They perform like SSRs. We've talked in the past on this channel about SSRs who don't act like SSRs. Like they don't perform like them. Their skills are not up to par. Something like that. Um, it's no secret that there are some in this very same GSSR who just don't. They don't stack up. That's not true for probably all of these in my opinion. Cleopatra might be the exception. But she still hits pretty well. Hits pretty well. Um, across the board though, you're looking at a very good crop of uh, SSRs here. Um, you do have some meta capability. You do have some meta capability. Um, but it's mostly going to be in the form of your damage output once again. Um, again, we mentioned Musashi uh, and Melt. Like, if you have those two, holy crap. It's crazy. It's crazy. Kaku, uh, yeah. Um, so for me personally this is a good it's not the best like it doesn't it doesn't immediately like jump out as this is the best one uh but this is a good one it's a good banner uh i definitely would not put it like at the bottom or anything um what's up moon cell so when it comes to ranking this uh i'm going to stick it in the middle for right now i'm gonna stick it in the middle for right now and we'll see what the other ones look like we'll see what the other ones look like uh maybe do some shuffling around um but we'll have to see we'll have to see for now it's not bad it's not like game breaking but it's 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 not bad right moving on to year three uh this to me is is more hit or miss than uh the previous one is uh again we mentioned you could get a scotty you could get an oreshkigo um 
or you could get a uh, a Sigurd, who probably is not going to get another buff for a long time. Um, oh yeah, baby! Eldubs, yo! 78, just resubscribed 13 months? for 13 months. Thank you so much for 13 months, Eldubs. Thank you, thank you. Um, a lot of variability here. A lot of variability here. Uh, Ivan, luckily, thankfully, I should say, especially if you're a Gotcha Devil, one of our mods, he absolutely loves Ivan the Terrible. Um, Ivan's good. <laughs> Ivan was strong before, now he's like, now he's damn good. So he went from NP gain three turns. Honestly, this was not a great skill. Uh, but debuff removal made it solid. Um, into the same NP gain, plus a battery, 20 to 30%. Um, own damage against chaotic and lawful enemies? What? That's so many including their uh debuff removal as well on the second skill it's been the same it doesn't need a buff in my opinion 20 to 40 percent five turn cooldown stars per turn five to ten three turns that's not bad at all and then invincible this is what's insane to me reduces all enemies attack for three turns and removes all their buffs removes all their buffs like what um if this ever gets a buff, I don't know. I, I I don't know what to think. This should never ever get a buff. Um, but as you can see in that first skill buff, like he's complete. He's complete. He has the survivability with the invincible. He has AOE buff removal. Um, he's got great utility in between NPs with the stars per turn. Obviously, as a rider, that's great. Not the highest star absorption in the rider class. Ozzy has it higher at 209, I believe. But 200 is really good. 200 is really good. It's higher than like 98% of the game. Um, he can remove his own debuffs. Like, he's just good, man. Uh, he's just really good. Uh, then when you look at... Oh, another thing, by the way. Uh, his his uh, his passive is against Avenger enemies. Which, like, low-key, you could make that work. But I just think it's funny. Um, then when you get to the NP, the standard buff scaling went from 300 to 500. 400 to 600. Uh, it was Buster Resist down 20% three turns after damage. Um, now it's 30% and then NP damage up 30% on the uh, first overcharge. That stays the same. Uh, and again, a little bit of a damage buff. He's just really complete. He's just really, really complete. He is a very overall, just like all there servant. Um, there's not really a whole lot that I would change about him if I had to be honest with you. Uh, that being said, if you're looking at this from like a newer player perspective, or a F2P perspective, getting Ivan is game changing. It is account changing because of the utility. I'm talking about the AOE enemy buff removal, right? Um, obviously the debuff removal is cool, the invincible, uh, all that other stuff, right? Um, but that capability on a younger account is like crazy. It's crazy. Uh, so that being said, like you're looking at a huge, huge degree of variability here huge degree of variability um so for me personally i look at this and it's tough for me to just focus on the oreshka go the malter the uh ivan malter obviously would be like a wife you pick for me but scotty um and it's tough for me to kind of like block out um mp1 potential hokusai uh mp1 okita alter mp1 semirama sigurd like such a wide variability um so we'll dive into the four stars here i mentioned fujino earlier that is a big draw for me um I, one of the more rare servants in the game but we don't we know she has a banner coming up um archer helena funny enough just got a buff and uh is on banner either right now or like starting tomorrow i think uh on the gp server um we can look at it but like uh you know it doesn't really change a whole lot um but yeah, so her NP buff right here, uh, the NP uh, gauge for the party is, that's cool. That's all right. It's based on overcharge. Um, and then defense for down, debuff resist down, damage to all enemies. She's never been like a good servant. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, she's never been uh, like the best one, right? Um, that being said, like party NP gauge, five stars per turn, five turns. Own damage up. <laughs> 
Damage plus is one of the most misleading uh, buffs in the entire game. It's one of the most misleading, uh, like, Imagine explaining damage up um, to new players and then showing them the HP bars <laughs> of like most enemies. <laughs> like, the fuck? It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. Um, third skill, arts up 20 to 40% and then debuff immune one time five turns with a five turn cooldown. It's just, it's just not good. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were doing there. Uh, Archa Helena is not going to be a draw. For me personally, for a people gameplay perspective, she's not going to be a draw, right? Um, not to mention a lot of these servants, uh, you probably either have them already. Um, Paris is good, Ronnie. Who's, is someone saying Paris is not good? Uh, you got Paris at 90? Um, no, Paris is really good. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so you probably have uh, at least some of these four stars, some common ones that show up for people. Parvati, one of the best lancers in the game. Naja, one of my favorites. Tomoe, Chiron, um, Nyalter uh, often shows up for people, and then Valks as well that you hear lately, right? Uh, other ones that like you may not have, but like could be a draw for you. Again, we mentioned Helena, Fujino, uh, Saber, Fran, Assassin, Needle Chris is a big draw for me personally. Um, She's got really cool art. It continues on with the like the space theme uh, under the hood there, right? Um, but she's just like it's it's Nito Chris. Like you can't really go wrong with Nito Chris. Um, we'll go through her kit real quick here. Own defense for three turns, ten to thirty percent. Good scaling, honestly. Good scheme. Good scaling. Um, further defense, thirty percent one turn, similar to Tamamo. Um, and then debuff resist up 30% three turns. Second skill is a taunt. That's always good Civ in my opinion. Anytime a servant has taunt, I'm a fan. Honestly, I'm a fan. Doesn't really matter who they are. Um, own damage reduction, uh, three attacks, five turns, thousand to 2000. That's actually useful, uh, weirdly enough. So damage up doesn't mean shit for us, but damage reduction is useful for us. Isn't that funny? Um, that's how, that's how like off kilter the scaling is in this game. Uh, third skill, attack up 20 to 30%, pretty good. NP damage up 10 to 30 or 10 to 20%, and then NP gain up 20 to 30%, right? Six turn cooldown on that. Three turns of downtime. Going into the NP here, which I do think will get a buff someday. Uh, damage to all enemies, and then defense reduction 20% three turns. 30% uh, chance to instant kill, but because you have decent uh, NP gain, three hits. Um, 0.78 on the NP charge per attack and the NP gain skill here. You could, as someone mentioned in chat, you could loop with her if you are not going to kill. Uh, if you did not kill, uh, instant kill activation first, obviously, uh, then you have a decent chance. You have a decent chance um, of nerfing, or not nerfing, I just read chat, of, uh, of looping with her. Um, that being said, it is what it is. So, uh, but this is a servant that I don't have, that I've always wanted to have, that I think is pretty cool. I like Needle Chris anyway, because yeah. Um, and so this for me would be a draw, right? But I don't think there's any escaping the variability, uh, the wide degree of quality uh, difference across these servants, right? Again, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but there's a massive, massive difference between the Scotty, the Ivan, the Ereshka Gull, um, and then, you know, the low NP level, uh, Sigurd, Okitan, Hokusai, right? Um, so, because of that, this is not a good banner to go for, in my opinion. Uh, it's not a good one to go for, in my opinion. Um, unless you really like, if you like all of these, then it's fine. If you like these servants, you will make them work. This, this is not a banner full of, like, objectively terrible servants that you just can't get to work no matter what. Um, or, like, even if you did, it would take way too much. Like, you can make every single one of these servants work, honestly. Like, they can, they can do the job. They can do the job. Uh, some of them better than others. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that they will all do the job on the SSR level. They'll all do it, right? Uh, so it's not like the worst one, but for right now, 
I do think it's like the second worst one. I think it's the second worst one. As someone just mentioned in chat right there, if we didn't have another Fujino rate up that we know is coming in about a year and three months, um, this might be a little bit more appealing, but again, you can't really bank on it because there's so many uh, four stars to choose from. Um, and then once again, I want to highlight something here. Uh, you are guaranteed one five star and one four star, uh, which is why that's being included in this discourse. Um, so, you know, it's not the worst. It's not the best, not the best. Um, and it's not one that I would, I would look at and say, Hey, I'm going to go for Saber Fran. I'm going to go for Fujino. I'm going to go for whoever else on this. The percent is not in your favor and you have too many uh, opportunities to get a servant that you just straight up would not want. Um, so yeah, moving on to these final two. If you're looking at the tier list here, you see our top two slots open. That's for a reason. These top two uh, are the most recent ones. Um, these are some really strong ones, really strong ones. Um, so the 2018, 2019 one, 2020, 2021 for NA, King Protea, Summer BB, uh, Mao Nobu, who again, we'll go through, but she's like, she's top tier now uh, in the Buster meta. Shinsu Wong, who's always been good. Arjuna Alter speaks for himself. Kama, Murasaki, Rainus, uh, Jarcher, and then Benny. Um, like really good, really good. Um, really good. Uh, as someone just mentioned in chat, you also have the, the swath of three stars here. The star capability that William Tell has for first turn, um, just like solid. It's nice. Who's top tier in the Buster meta? Melusine, but Demon King Nobunaga is up there. Demon King Nobunaga is up there, but it's Melusine, uh, no question. Melusine is the top Buster meta servant. Um, Asclepius, you guys saw what Asclepius can do uh, in my LB 5.2 runs. Um, we did a no debuff run. Um, against uh, Aphrodite. We did not take a single debuff the entire fight uh, due to double Asclepius. We did have Sanzong, but her one turn debuff immunity was largely just like convenient. It wasn't necessary. It was the double Asclepius. Um, and that was regardless of his NP level. So uh, being able to do a no debuff run against Aphrodite was so satisfying. It was so satisfying. Um, that being said, uh, as someone mentioned here, um, story lock, so he can't get it in friend points. It has lots of utility. I completely agree with that. Completely agree with that 100, 100%. Uh, let me look at something real quick here, Daryl. Uh, get that added for you. Um, but looking across the board on the four stars, um, some of them are like borderline OP. Um, really good, really good. Uh, I only see maybe one that like could be considered a disappointment, maybe two. Um, let's see here. All right, Daryl Pagman has been added. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah, so, uh, I don't know. I know some people like Xin Lang Yu. We'll look at her. Uh, we'll look at Saber Maeve. We'll look at Yu Mei Ren as well. The rest of them, honestly, um, they're pretty solid. Uh, even Saber Diarmid, he's solid. Like, he's, he's, he does the job. He's good enough. Uh, and with Saber Diarmid, um, one thing that, I don't know, people kind of take for granted with him, um, he has a pretty complete kit. He has a pretty complete kit. Uh, NP gain, defense up three turns, star absorption, 600%, but he's got a middle star weight, so that's fine. Uh, a star bomb. Um, he has evasion in, in addition to his defense up, quick up, attack up, so multiplicative damage right there. Um... Moraltuk is a cool NP. It removes their defensive buffs. It has a chance to instant kill. Like he's just got a really solid overall kit. Um, the only possible way I would say you could like very clearly benefit him as a four star would be either like a small battery or a heal. Like he's he's good. He's solid. You know, um, he's not the flashiest, sexiest thing in the world from a kit perspective, but he's solid. 
Um, so I've always been pretty high on Diarmid, Saber Diarmid. Uh, I went so far as to roll roll him specifically when he came out. Um, looking at the other ones here, Queen Maeve, Saber is up next. If you're rolling for Saber Maeve, you're rolling for a reason. We're not gonna like mince words here. But like, you know, there's other things. There's other things, right? Um, 10 to 20%, three turns, stars per turn, five to 10. 10 is actually really good, by the way. 10 stars per turn, three turns on a four star. A 60% chance to charm all enemies and then reduce their arts resistance. This is the, really the reason you use this. It counts as an arts up for her. Um, and then on the third skill, party attack, that's gonna be multiplicated with the second skill. Um, party crit damage, except self three turns, not a fan of that. Going into the NP here, um, it's just damage on the effect. Uh, the overcharge is the nice shot. <laughs> nice shot reduces their defense by 10% per stack for three turns after the NP. So kind of cool, decent to like uh, collect maybe from like a gameplay perspective, maybe not so much, but not, also not terrible, right? Um, I don't understand this servant. I will never understand this servant. I don't know why they thought this was like the way to go about building a story related important servant but she do be looking damn good so i can't be too mad um she has just this weird kit you already know about her kit i'm not gonna belabor the point um first and foremost she removes her own buffs she removes her own buffs uh so on her np just Uh, debuff immune for one turn, NP gauge every turn, five turns. We're not going to look at the second skill buff yet. Uh, we'll look at the second skill, but not the buff yet. HP recovery for turn, um, buff removal resist for one turn, which is 100%. Okay. Um, third skill was an NP gauge up 18 to 27%. Uh, and then a chance to reduce the enemy's NP gauge. The buff on this was actually pretty necessary. Buff removal resist for three turns. Uh, okay. All right. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Um, attack up as well. The attack up is actually pretty nice. On a five turn cooldown, 23% is very good. 23% on a five turn cooldown is very, very good. The buff removal resist is nice. Um, for three turns, 100%. Like, it is necessary as well. Basically, no passives. Um, I was like looking at a pen skills. Her is uh, hers is against ruler enemies. You could probably, if you played the Lost Belt, know why about that. Um, so she'll remove her debuffs, but she'll also remove her buffs depending on your buff removal resist. Maybe you've gotten some extra buff removal resist on her. Uh, I don't know the percentages um, that you would need to guarantee this every time outside of the three turns. I assume it's a hundred percent. I assume it is that. Uh, it is defense ignoring and then curse damage 2005 turns buster performance up first it's just This is whatever This is whatever This is whatever You know um, But then you have Xin Lang Yu This is the easiest problem to fix in the entire game I swear to god I swear to you the easiest problem to fix in this game For one servant if you just had to add One skill Aspect like just one not a new skill not a bunch of buffs but just add one line the only thing they would need to add to Xin Lang Yu uh, would be a taunt just give her a taunt you don't have to do any don't, don't you don't have to change anything else just make any of these a, a two-turn taunt she's got she's got good art she's fun um, she's cool in the story, like, she's really, like, uh, loyal, like, she, she's got, she's got good shit, you know? Um, on her NP, <sighs> alright, so, when she attacks, she can reduce the enemy's defense, um, when she critical attacks, she can remove, uh, their buffs, and then when she gets attacked, she re it reduces the enemy's critical damage by 10%. When she takes a critical hit, 
She recovers the party's HP. I... There's no reason to use her. Like we let's 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 call a spade a spade. If there's a fight that she can like go out and like solo and do really well, is there a reason to use her over someone else unless you like her? No, there's not. There's not. Um looking into her kit here. Uh arts quick up and crit damage up. 20% on the first two, 30% on the third. Um five turn cooldown, two turns of downtime, not bad, right? Uh, star absorption up 600%, but as a Lancer, middle east star absorption, so that's fine. That's fine. We'll take that. Uh, debuff immunity three times three turns. Buff remove resist three times three turns. 100%. Not bad. Um, third scale. Uh, guts two times over three turns. I cannot tell you how much I hate that. I cannot tell you how much I hate that. I don't mind that it's two times. I don't mind that it's one HP. But two times over three turns with an eight turn cooldown. Five turns of downtime? What? I don't understand why that, like, who, who designed this server? I don't understand this at all. Um, so, two times over three turns with eight turn cooldown. Uh, guts. Um, it also has a 10 to 20% battery, but, like, for what like to get to this i don't know she's just not good she's not good uh more power to you if you like her not me not me i don't like her at all uh i think she's cute that's it she deserves better if you gave her a target focus at least her kit would make sense from an np perspective but it doesn't so that being said when you look at the five stars on this you look at the four stars on this um, are there some some misses on the four stars? Yeah, we just looked at some that are kind of weaker, right? You may Ren, uh, Shin Lang Yu. Um, but there's also some like very, very good four stars. I had someone in my YouTube comments section tell me that their Lan Ling does 2 million uh, crit damage on a buff stacking comp, um, which I uh, actually would have lived the same happy life and never heard that information because uh, I just could not care less. Um, but Astray is very good. MHXX, Miyu is incredibly good going forward. Um, I like Lakshmi Bai a lot. I think people misuse her, but I like her a lot. Um, I actually force her to quick loop. I, that's how much I like her on my quick account. Yes, that's super scope and waiver. I don't give a shit. I do it anyway. Uh, I really like her. Um, but that being said, there's some really, sh like really solid four stars. If you get an MHXX on this banner... To me, that's like a four and a half star. To me, that's like a four and a half star. Um, good point there, Jeff, with uh, Assassin Ushi. So, um, I think it's a very good banner uh, when you include the four stars. When you look at the five stars, Arjuna Alter, Chinsu Wong, Demon King Nobunaga. Let's consider where she'll be uh, on the JP server, right? Not where she is right now or where she was on release. But what she eventually becomes, because this is a long-term game. So Demon King Nobunaga, Chinsu Wong, Arjuna Alter, Kama, Rainus, even Murasaki, um, Jarcher is not bad at all. Benny Enma is not bad at all. I personally love King Protea. Can't wait to roll on King Protea. Summer BB, excuse me, is not going to be the hardest hitting servant you've got, but she does have a lot of value other places. I'm talking, of course, about this third skill. Uh, command card lock not to mention the fact that the crit capability is here uh, stars per turn um, the 50% battery the buster up the NP damage up uh, one time over three turn evade uh, the HP recovery is there that's fine um, crit damage up absorption is 800% on 52 so that's on, it's on the lower side right it's probably like 25% um, but like 800% helps right and the crit damage is nice. So if you give her some menial buffs, she's gonna crit really hard for you. Is it gonna be class neutral? Yeah, most likely. Uh, but that kind of comes with the territory. She's also uh, burn debuff immune. Uh, and then on the NP, this is not good damage. This is so ripe for a buff, I can't even tell you. It's got the standard 300 to 500%. It needs the 400 to 600% scaling that comes with a buff. Um, Reducing an enemy's NP gauge by one is okay. The chance to further do it is whatever. 
Uh, but that being said, she's probably, if I had to guess, going to get a buff within the next year and a half. Um, pretty uh, amenable. Pretty amenable. Um, mats on the ascensions. Not to mention, of course, the... Uh, the great lotto mats um all the way up through like skill level seven so um i don't know why they thought 10 percent was okay on the on the further drain chance like come on i get the whole like overcharge aspect but like come on dude 50 percent of 500 percent uh overcharge is ridiculous um so if we're talking about across the board if the weakest servants in this are summer bb and king protea then we probably have a really good crop we probably have a great crop of servants here um king protea does not have the highest base hp in the game but she does have the highest potential hp in the game i'm not gonna go through her kit if you know how it works then you know how to make it work if you don't know how it works then it can be very confusing uh it can be overwhelming to look at at first but if you do have a King Protea, uh, even an NP1, um, you've got a pretty fun servant who can do a lot of things and outlast a lot of fights that normally uh, she would not, she would, a lot of servants would not be able to, right? Not to mention uh, a pretty comfy AoE um, NP with Alter Ego class. So you have free um, class advantage against four classes right off the bat. I think it's five actually. Um, Buster up on that further. Uh, Buster up on that right there with the attack up as well. Monster strength, by the way, is not usually three turns. Monster strength is typically one or two turns. Um, one turn on a Stalfo, one turn on Anna. Um, three turns on the probably worst server in the game, if not one of them. Um, two turns here, two turns, three turns on Asterios. And then single attack for Zerka Kentucky. So three turns is pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Uh, but she does have that. And again, the first two skills you'd have to look through. Um, Buster up built in as well. Arts up built in. Uh, not to mention the crit up. Like, she's cool. She's not bad. Uh, if you roll her on your GSSR, assuming you don't have feelings one way or another about her, if you like her like I do, you're going to be happy. Um, but if you don't really carry it away, then like, you know, you're content, uh, cause she's good. Same with BB. She provides utility outside of like a high damaging, uh, NP, right? So that being said to me personally, this is just about as can't miss as you can get on this GSSR. This fourth year right here, 2018, 2019, to me personally is head and shoulders above the rest. Uh, I easily put this at the top. Uh, I, I mean, if you are in doubt, you don't know one way or the other, like, hey, I don't really know uh, which one I want to go for. I could go for any of these, or I don't care which one I go for. Fuck it, dude. Go for this one. Go for this one. Um, Jarcher's got a fat battery. She arcs loops so easily. Benny is extremely useful. Great single target servant with buff removal resist as well. Great party utility. Murasaki has some incredible capabilities, including a buff block, by the way. Um, it's only one turn, but it is what it is. She does monstrous damage to demonic enemies, and she helps your party to do extra damage against demonic enemies. Defense down, NP seal, NP charge for herself, NP damage up, uh, party damage reduction, three attack, three turns, which is okay, but then debuff immunity one time, three turns, and then buff removal resist one time, three turns. Uh, what? That's, that's good. She's got a great kit. Great kit. Um, as, uh, as Otto will tell you, she's got a very high, um, gameplay potential. So, even if all of these four stars don't resonate with you, even if some of them are hit or miss, I really feel like this is the strongest five star group out of the GSSR groups right here overall, the five. Um, not only... Is it a strong group overall? But um, there's not nearly as many of them. You're not looking at 14, 15 uh, different options here. You're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So a 10% chance to get whichever one you want. Is that great? No. Is it better than 7% and 
in five and a half or six percent yes yes it is yes it is so um to me if someone doesn't know where to roll they don't know who to go for they don't know what they like or they don't care i'm gonna recommend this one right here i'm gonna recommend this one right here because no matter who they get uh they will have a ton of gameplay value at some point in their playthrough some of them will be a daily usage like an arjuna altar potentially a Rainus. Um, some of them will be like fantastic as the last servant in your lineup whether that is chinsu huang um, bb is good in that role uh, some of them will be good boss killers uh, and some of them will be like hey i can take this servant just about anywhere against five different classes and do uh, pretty cool things. That's King Protea. So um, this right here to me is the go-to. It's probably the one that I'm gonna go roll for on my main account, most likely. Um, simply because extra NP copy for Benny, extra NP copy for Jarcher. Uh, it would be another NP copy for Rainus, but like whatever. Extra NP copy for Murasaki. My main account doesn't have comma, my quick account does. This would be a USO, but I'm willing to take that chance. My main account does not have Chin Tzu Long. That's huge. Extra NP copy, extra NP copy. And my main account does not have King Protea either, which is huge to me. Um, so this will probably be the one that I go for. Not to be like super outdone is this final year. Uh, I do rank this final year right here on the A tier. Um, not just because of where everyone else has fallen, but also because of its own merits. Uh, we talked a little bit about some of the heavy hitters here, some of like the Hallmark Servants. There's a reason Space Ishtar is still the best farming servant in the game in JP uh, after, what, two and a half years now um, since her release. Um, I probably don't need to go through her kit for you. You probably are well aware of it. Um, but we will go through a couple of these other ones. So uh, we went through Voyager already. I've been through Yang's extensively. I did a video about Yang. Uh, not to mention um, some of the other like more obvious standouts. Uh, one of the easiest loopers in the game in Da Vinci Rider, Summer Musashi, another very easy looper, um, especially if you've got like NP2+. Uh, Super Ryan, you probably know about his kit, right? Bunny Toria here though, um, There's it's funny to me that there's like a wide variety of opinions on Bunny Toria. And what I have noticed is that it largely depends on what NP level you have. <laughs> Which sucks because this is a limited SSR, um, so it's going to be a little bit expensive. But uh, it's just a very different gameplay experience depending on like what you've got going on, right? So um, NP gauge up 20 to 40 percent. It's a little bit awkward, but it's okay. Um, evade for a turn, and then um, next turn after this, um, one uh, time, right? Oh, no, it's one turn. So after the turn, the next turn has 30% attack up at level 10. Second skill came out at five new command card and then critical damage up. I'm glad they buffed this. They saw what was going on um, with her like potential, and I'm really glad they capitalized on it. So you remove one ally's cards from your deck, which is massive. It's really huge. Uh, if you're running certain like gimmick comps, um, it, it just like it really really helps uh, there is a min turn comp against the murder furby in lb6 that utilizes this right here it might be the chloe comp it might be the chloe comp um, i think it's four turns like it's really good and then critical damage again still the same but np gain for a turn is pretty nice because it's 20 30 percent five turn cooldown not bad not bad the third skill here, attack up 20 to 40%. That's pretty strong. Star absorption at 600%. Um, she has very directly middle of the road uh, star absorption at 100 um, when we go from 0 to 200. Right in the middle. So 600% is pretty nice. 600% is pretty nice. Uh, on the NP though, it's 300 to 500. This should have, I hot take, this should have been 400 to 600 on release. Should have been 400 to 600 on release. They had to have known that her NP damage was weak from release because they gave her defense ignore. Um, she does have NP charge 20%, uh, not to mention the quick arts, the buster 20% uh, initial activation. So like if you have a brave chain with her NP, like it's not bad. It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, but it just does not hit hard enough, especially as a neutral class. Like 
this doesn't do the job for a lot of different people. Now, I had like stupid good luck that I didn't even look for uh, on her banner on both of my accounts. So my quick account was going for NP5 uh, Rider fucking Carmilla. Um, I think I got like NP3. Uh, I got NP5 Bunny Toria in like six multis. It was stupid. My main account, MP5, five multis. One multi had two of her. It was insane. It was insane. Um, and that was going for MP5 Summer Melt. That one did get Summer Melt at MP5. Uh, so I just had like absurd luck rolling for her. A lot of people did, weirdly enough, uh, that I've talked to. Um, and so I don't really, I don't really know. Um, the gameplay experience from a first-hand perspective, right? Now, that being said, there's no denying that 300%, like, the attack is not, like, the greatest in the game. In fact, if we go down here, I'm pretty sure um, she has the same attack values at minimum with Jean d'Arc. Uh, attack values at minimum with Archer, Osakaba, Aime. Like, this is not, this is nothing to call home about, right? Um... But she has the second highest HP out of all servants. That matters a ton. Very accessible materials as a ruler. Uh, so is the damage necessarily going to be there at NP1, 2? No, it's not. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not. Um, but she's tanky. She can help your team out um, via her strong NP on the third wave. Um, and then uh, the second skill here is going to make sure that if you have the wrong cards in your hand she can help with that but there's no denying she's not like a meta servant she's not gonna like completely change your playthrough actually i take that back unless you're if you have like a new account potentially mid-tier take here if you have a new account like you're just starting a game and you get her on gssr um i'll go so far as to say that she's a hard carry through a lot of part one i would say like the first five lost or not lost spells the first five singularities she can just handle i feel pretty confident in that is it gonna be like class advantage i'm three turning no no but is she gonna die no <laughs> no she's not gonna die uh she's gonna uh enable everybody else um to get some buffs off maybe cycle through some hans buffs maybe some shakespeare buffs uh and you'll be okay you'll be okay so for a newer account i think she'd be pretty good um, not the best, but like pretty good, you know? Um, so if you're looking at like the weakest aspect of this banner, it's not her. It's probably Say, uh, because Say is extremely situational. We'll take a look at that. But like Yang is fantastic. Space Ishtar is fantastic. Summer Musashi, Davinki, Super Orion is in a class all his own. Um, you found a cosplay for Hughes. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that shadow. Um, Saber Stolfo, again, I really like Saber Stolfo. Um, but anyway, what's, uh, with, with Say, uh, good friend of the program, give if she head pets, loves Say Shonagon. I don't mind Say Shonagon, I like her. Um, she's NP2 Archer for me. Her Berserker is phenomenal, though. Um, so her damage is 600 to 1000 standard scaling, but, um, if you have enemy servants with neutral alignments, and shadow servants like you're gonna do um a lot of better damage uh, not a lot of better but like a lot better damage uh than you would otherwise not to mention the main attributes so if you could check off two of these like you're gonna do really good damage if you check off i don't know if you can check off all three you probably can in very situational purposes um if you do be like you know get yourself in a situation where you can check those off i need to drink some water uh <laughs> Then you're going to do monster damage. You're going to do monster damage. Um, but it's just really situational. It's really situational. Uh, party attack up 10 to 20%. It's okay. It's whatever. Uh, party's MP gauge 10% three turns. That's pretty nice. And then party's HP. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, three attack over three turn of eight is very good. Um, six turn cooldown. I'd like to see it five, but that's me being greedy. Uh, crit damage up 20 to 30% is middling. Um, quick up 20 to 30%. That's fine. MP gauge 10 to 20%. This should be double. And then crit stars, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. So she's not the worst thing in the world. She's got good star absorption already. 
Um, but if she's like the lowest on the totem pole uh, for your SSR and your GSSR, like you're probably sitting pretty well. Um, is this the best one? No, it's not the best one. To me, this is head and shoulders above the rest the previous year. But this is fine. And if we look at this from a percentage-based uh, approach, you're looking at this to say, maybe maybe you want a Space Ishtar, right? 10% chance of Space Ishtar. If we combine all of these to say like, what's my percent chance of getting a great servant? I would go so far as to say Yang, Space Ishtar, Summer Musashi, Da Vinci, um, Romulus, Super Orion, Saber Stalthal, a 70% chance to get a great servant. A great servant and you have I would say a 90% chance of getting a very good servant the only outlier of those being Bunny Toria in my opinion um, Bunny Toria is again not terrible she does this she just needs a lot of work and she is going to fill different roles depending on where you're at in your gameplay um, if you're early in the game she's gonna be phenomenal for you uh, if you are late in the game eh, we'll see we'll see but that's really good odds. Honestly, 70% that you're going to get a very good or great servant. That's, that's really damn good. It's really damn good. Um, if we were to apply the same approach up here, uh, you're looking at, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, potentially nine, but eight. So the 80% chance you're going to get a very good servant based on where JP buffs end up going uh, and their current status uh, as well. So like, cool you know these are really good so i'm firmly uh i'm really comfortable with these two being in the top two i don't think there's any question in fact i think that the gap between a and b is substantial um but you know that's to be expected it's to be expected So if we go through these <clears throat> to kind of recap here on top um, was the fourth one in my opinion the fifth one uh, is next after that um, the lowest on these is the first year uh, then you have the second year which i believe we slotted in the b tier we did so second year was in b tier right in the middle and then uh third year was at c tier not the worst not the best um, yeah, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Um, once again, if you have any uh, feedback on this, if you have different opinions on this, if you say, well, hey, uh, Mr. Stupid Streamer Guy, you forgot about this, or you didn't include this, or what about this? Um, let me know in the comments below. Um, I know we're, let's say, like two months from the announcement of this, most likely. Uh, it'll be the first week of July that this is out. We'll probably get the announcement in a week or two or before then. Um, we all know when it's going to be, though. Um, then uh, maybe you're looking forward. Maybe you're looking ahead. Uh, if not, though, maybe this will like kind of help jog your memory um, of these servants who came out a long time ago, help you refresh on some newer ones as well. You do have a couple months as of the day that this video is posted to make your decision, uh, but I imagine this video will continue to accumulate views between now and gssr uh so let me know in the comments below who you like if this is after the gssr who you pick uh if there's a avoid servant so i always like to hear who people want to avoid um maybe why you want to avoid them like maybe you don't like someone maybe you already have it, you know, five copies of them um, whatever it is uh let me know in the comments below love to hear that stuff love to see the feedback uh until then i will see you in the discord and uh, see you on stream as well, twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching. Take care.